The story began in Dongtu Ch Seaj City, where a senior sister carried an album and approached Yang Chen to inquire if he had drawn and painted her picture in the album and sold it in the academy. Yang Chen responded to the senior sister, questioning whether it was because of her exceptional beauty that all the brothers and sisters were interested in her album. The senior sister, visibly upset, chastised him for his lack of cultivation and for engaging in unethical activities all day. She warned him about the upcoming inner court assessment, stating that he would be expelled from the academy if he continued such behavior. In response, Yang Chen assured her not to worry, as he had reached the pinnacle of the Fuhu Fist and was confident he would have no problem with the inner court examination. However, the other fellows nearby laughed at Yang Chen's words, which they found hard to believe. They pointed out that Yang Chen had been in the hospital for three years and was still at the first level of body tempering. Undeterred, the senior sister expressed her desire to witness Yang Chen's cultivated fuhu fist at its culmination. Yang Chen was surprised and declined, stating he did not wish to harm delicate flowers with his strong hands. Nevertheless, the senior sister playfully hit him with a rope stick. Feeling a little nervous, Yang Chen explained that his martial spirit was incredibly powerful when stimulated, and that he couldn't control it. He expressed his fear of accidentally hurting the senior sister, but his words were met with laughter. Continuing the conversation, the senior sister asked Yang Chen if he knew the meaning of a martial soul. Confidently, Yang Chen replied that the martial soul symbolized a heavenly Taoist master, endowing martial artists with exceptional talents and making them known as God's darlings. Surprised by his knowledge, the senior sister praised Yang Chen's understanding. In response, Yang Chen claimed to be a great heavenly Taoist master, prompting laughter from someone behind him. This person was named Zhu Lian, who ridiculed Yang Chen, mentioning that he had been hospitalized for three years and was struggling with his studies. Zhu Lian called Yang Chen a worthless piece of trash and demanded that he display his martial spirit. The senior sister intervened, telling Zhu Lian to stop provoking him, but Zhu Lian insisted on teaching Yang Chen a lesson. Assuming his position, Zhu Lian's peers whispered among themselves, noting that he was at the peak of the second stage of body tempering, and believed Yang Chen was about to meet his downfall. However, to their shock, Yang Chen effortlessly sent Zhu Lian flying with a single punch. The senior sister called out to Yang Chen, hoping he would improve his cultivation quickly and be admitted to the inner courtyard. She advised him not to waste his talent in martial arts. Yang Chen thanked the senior sister for her reminder. Surprisingly, the other fellows commented that his martial soul might be remarkable. Yang Chen didn't respond and decided to leave. Meanwhile, two girls were standing nearby, and as a young man passed by, they remarked on his handsome appearance, jokingly expressing their desire to marry him. Yang Chen was present, and the young man addressed him as elder brother. His name was Xiao Kue, and Yang Chen was delighted to see him there. One of the girls wondered aloud why the elder brother of the first-ranked person in the outer courtyard was himself ranked last. Yang Chen happily greeted his brother Xiao Kue and remarked on their enjoyable time together. Yang Chen shared with his brother that his martial soul had awakened, expressing great confidence that they would worship him even if the true dragon or Lai Kinglin himself were to come to earth. Xiao Kue suggested that his senior sister Lai should hug Yang Chen. Yang Chen jokingly responded that it would be too hot if Lai Kinglin were to look at him that way. However, Yang Chen also expressed his sadness, feeling sorry for the girl Muxu. Hearing this, Xiao Kue revealed that Muxu still didn't know about Yang Chen awakening his martial soul, and suggested they go and inform her. They happily headed towards Yu Muxu's courtyard, but Sister Shi Kang stopped them. They explained that they were looking for Muxu, and Shi Kang offered her assistance if they needed to deliver a message to her. However, Yang Chen insisted that she step aside as they only sought Muxu. Annoyed, Shi Kang insulted Yang Chen calling him not only a worthless person but also stupid. Yang Chen became furious. Shi Kang stated that Muxu didn't want to be close to him, as she would enter the inner courtyard after the exams. Yang Chen couldn't believe her words and grew angrier. Just then, Muxu arrived and told Yang Chen that although they had grown up together, things were no longer the same, and she asked him to keep his distance. This angered Yang Chen, and he stormed off. Xiao Kue assured him that she would regret her decision in the future. Later that night, Yang Chen sat alone, harnessing his power and contemplating recent events, visibly shocked by his abilities. Yang Chen was shocked when he saw the book, realizing it was the ancient demon dragon martial arts inheritance. Considering his current strength, he knew he could only practice the first chapter. He decided to begin by cultivating his mind, understanding that it would help him claim the profound martial arts path 
and comprehend the immense power of the heavens. Determined, he started practicing the Jinseng Sutra, knowing it was necessary to cultivate his mind first. Xiao Quan noticed the unusual occurrence and was astonished to see lightning. He was surprised to witness his brother absorbing the spiritual power from the entire yard. Most Taoists possessed a single attribute, and a dual attribute was scarce. For instance, a fire heavenly Taoist master could only absorb the fire attribute's aura between heaven and earth. Yang Chen's ability to control all attributes in the world shocked him. This revelation overjoyed Yang Chen. Xiao Kui approached him and asked why he was so happy. Yang Chen hugged his brother and vowed to protect him from that moment. He explained that his martial soul's ability to devour spiritual energy was incredibly terrifying evident from the rapid absorption of spiritual energy from the entire courtyard. Yang Chen took Xiao Kui to Keoj Mountain, which was abundant in spiritual energy and ideal for their cultivation. They needed to improve their cultivation levels for the upcoming courtyard examination. At Keoj Mountain, Yang Chen engaged in intense practice. Xiao Kui was astonished by his brother's absorption of the actual fire from the sun, resembling a heavenly Taoist master. Xiao Kui couldn't believe his eyes as he witnessed Yang Chen progress to the second stage of body tempering in just one day, a feat that had taken him a month. Suddenly, Xiao Kui noticed a strange smell and became frightened when he saw his brother seemingly buried in the soil. Yang Chen emerged from the ground, leaving Xiao Kui in shock, who asked if Yang Chen had tempered his body three times. Xiao Kui observed his brother's transformed body and marveled at how Yang Chen had reached the third stage of quenching in less than a day, while it had taken him three months to achieve the same. The third stage of quenching involved refining the flesh, enhancing its quality, and purging impurities from the body. Yang Chen expressed his hunger, prompting Xiao Kui to go and find food. After a few minutes, Xiao Kui returned carrying a hardened jade hoofed bull, which they roasted and began eating. Despite consuming the entire bull, Yang Chen claimed he was still hungry. Perplexed, Xiao Kui asked him what was happening and wondered if Yang Chen's martial soul was playing tricks on him. Suddenly, infuriating energy surged through the surroundings. Yang Chen declared he was no longer hungry, and Xiao Kui cautiously emerged behind a rock. Yang Chen expressed a sense of empowerment, and his brother happily complimented him, noting that he had consecutively risen to two realms in just half a day. Xiao Kui encouraged Yang Chen to test his newfound strength by punching something, so Yang Chen struck a tree, obliterating it with a single blow. Xiao Kui was astonished by the display of Yang Chen's fire attribute. Yang Chen, too, was taken aback, realizing that it must be the true Kai of the sun's accurate fire and the Kai described in heavenly scriptures, a power that comprehended all things and had a reputation well deserved. Aware that darkness was approaching, Xiao Kui suggested they find a cave to continue their practice. While searching for a suitable cave, Yang Chen suddenly noticed something and was surprised to find a girl bathing. At night, a girl was bathing in a small lake, unaware Yang Chen and his brother Xiao Kui were watching her. Suddenly, Xiao Kui made some noise, prompting Yang Chen to try to silence him. The girl noticed someone was watching her but couldn't identify them as they hid themselves. She shouted for them to come out, brandishing her sword. On hearing a noise from an earth mad bear, she ran towards it, ready to confront the threat. Xiao Kui urged Yang Chen to flee since it was an earth mad bear, but Yang Chen intrigued as he had never seen one before, wanted to witness the bear firsthand. Nervously, Xiao Kui explained that an adult earth mad bear possessed the strength of the eighth level of body quenching, making it unbeatable for them. However, Yang Chen ignored his brother's warnings and approached the bear. Meanwhile, the bear began attacking the girl. To his surprise, Yang Chen realized that the girl he had observed bathing was none other than Kai and Lingxi. Yang Chen told his brother to go and help the girl, but Xiao Kui hesitated, explaining that the bear was still young and injured at the fifth level of the body quenching realm. He reasoned that the bear was near death due to critical injuries. As the bear and the girl continued to fight, the girl ultimately killed the earth mad bear and noticed Yang Chen and Xiao Kui. She recognized Yang Chen and insulted him, calling him trash, while he laughed it off. The girl, known as Vixen, questioned if they were the ones who had been at the lake earlier. Yang Chen defended himself, claiming they were uninvolved and had only arrived after hearing the commotion. He praised Linksy's heroic fighting style, admiring its beauty. However, she remained skeptical. Linksy warned that if she discovered they were lying, she would kill them. Xiao Kui reminisced with his brother about their past when they entered the martial arts academy three years ago. Yang Chen speculated that Linksy had likely forgotten about those times, but Xiao Kui suggested their father would be thrilled if Yang Chen married her and brought her home. 
Yang Chen replied that Kai and Lingxi would merely be a backup option. Half a month later, Yang Chen and his brother Xiao Kui emerged from the forest, both visibly exhausted. People around them observed their condition. Yang Chen remarked that the ginseng scripture was beneficial overall, but having clothes constantly burnt in the process was annoying. Xiao Kui advised him not to be dissatisfied, emphasizing that his technique had enabled them to reach the fifth layer of body tempering peak in just half a month, an impressive feat. Yang Chen laughed and reassured his brother that it was only natural, promising to protect him in the future. Xiao Kui reminded them to hurry since the rules for the inner courtyard exam would be announced that day at the outer courtyard square. At the square, the brothers entered, attracting the attention of others who questioned whether Yang Chen was a heavenly Taoist master. Yang Chen greeted senior sister Lai Kinglin, who expressed concern about his absence from martial arts classes for over a month. She inquired about his whereabouts during the past half month. Yang Chen replied that he had been cultivating. He assured the senior sister that she needn't worry because no one in the inner courtyard assessment could match him, as he was a great heavenly Taoist master. This angered senior sister Lai, who questioned whether he had advanced to the second level of the body tempering realm. Yang Chen explained that he had completed bone refinement and reached the pinnacle of the fifth layer of the body tempering realm. In a fury, senior sister Lai stormed off, doubting his words. The announcer proceeded to explain the rules of the exam. He stated that the inner courtyard assessment would be divided into two stages. In the first stage, they could form three teams and enter Kaoj Mountain, using any means necessary to collect materials such as spirit grass or spirit beasts. However, their safety was paramount, and they could request help if in danger, as teachers would be stationed around the mountain to protect them. The announcer instructed them to return after three days to learn about the second stage. Senior sister Lai approached Yang Chen and suggested forming a team with Jian Wuk. However, Yang Chen dismissed the idea, stating that Xiao Kui was already on his team, as they planned to hunt monsters in Kaoj Mountain. Senior sister Lai stormed off in anger once again. Xiao Kui commented on how much she cared about Yang Chen. They all set off towards Kaoj Mountain. Xiao Kui asked his brother if he genuinely didn't want to form a group. Yang Chen replied that they would form a team based on the circumstances. Xiao Kui pointed out Muxu who was with Wen Jenming, catching their attention. Xiao Kui informed Yang Chen that the person with Muxu was Wen Jenming, the young master of Guangyuan Pharmaceutical Company, and a student of Beihu Pavilion. Yang Chen showed little interest in the information. Wen Jenming then taunted Xiao Kui, suggesting he would fail the assessment if he remained on the same team as his trash brother. Xiao Kui didn't respond appropriately, leading Wen Jenming to wish them luck sarcastically for the exam. Other people also joined in mocking them. During the night, an earth mad bear appeared. Yang Chen swiftly killed the bear with a single move, instructing his brother to collect the loot. Xiao Kui marveled at Yang Chen's speed, as he had eliminated the mad bear in just one second with a single strike. Yang Chen urged them to move on to the next goal. Meanwhile, the other people rushed to witness a celestial phenomenon in the sky, perceiving it as a miraculous sign. They exclaimed about the event being a miracle and anticipated something extraordinary happening. However, Yang Chen remained skeptical, explaining that it was merely the Earth's veins triggering a celestial phenomenon akin to two shooting stars. Two men suddenly appeared and commented on the Earth's veins' remarkable nature for arousing celestial phenomena. However, they were uncertain if this event would give birth to rare treasures. One of the men urged everyone to disperse and continue their assessment, emphasizing the danger and potential risk of being sucked in leading to death. As everyone moved away, Yang Chen continued to observe the phenomenon. He pondered the claims of the Jinsang Sutra, which asserted the ability to comprehend all things in heaven and earth and seize their creation. He wondered if he could gain insights into the meaning of thunder and lightning. Suddenly, thunder and lightning approached him. Yang Chen lay on the ground, and his brother and two men approached him. One of the men commented on his unlucky encounter with lightning while the other checked his condition, and confirmed that he was still breathing. They decided to take him to Elder Kayan for medical treatment. Xiao Kui wanted to accompany them, but they insisted he continue with the assessment. The following morning, Yang Chen woke up and wondered where he was. Remembering being struck by lightning the previous night, he felt pain and realized that the celestial scripture had absorbed the thunder, transforming it into heavenly thunder Kai. Delighted, he believed that he would become invincible. As he stepped out of the house, he noticed a girl painting. Yang Chen approached her, shocked to realize she was the same person he had met at the lake. Yang Chen addressed her as Aizora and wondered if she was a heavenly Taoist master. Just then, Kayan Bao Guang arrived and asked Yang Chen if he could perceive fluctuations in the soul powers of others. Yang Chen affirmed this ability. 
Kayan Bao Guang explained that the pattern carved on the animal skin was of the wood attribute and had a sense of heaviness, indicating a defensive pattern. He asked Yang Chen if he wanted to learn, to which Yang Chen humbly bowed down, accepting him as his master. She disappointed her father, saying Yang Chen was a disgrace. In addressing Yang Chen, Kayan Bao Guang conveyed a condition for becoming his student, emphasizing that he must not be mediocre. He further informed Yang Chen that he would be expelled from the school if he failed to make a name for himself within five years. Curious, Yang Chen asked what it would take to make a name for himself. His master replied that he should make a name for himself in the East. This revelation left Yang Chen shocked, prompting his master to inquire if there was a problem. Yang Chen agreed to learn the skills, leaving Ling Xiu speechless. Kayan Bao Guang decided to stay at Kaoj Martial Academy for a while, and advised Yang Chen to learn as much as he could. He also urged Yang Chen not to be overly polite and to cultivate bravery. He instructed Yang Chen to focus on completing his inner academy exams. Ling Xiu accompanied him to see him off, and to Yang Chen's surprise, he discovered that she, too, was a heavenly Taoist master. Curious about her cultivation level, he asked her, only to receive a furious reaction as she slammed the door shut. Meanwhile, at Kaoj Mountain, Zio Kue faced a bear, wielding his sword in an attempt to kill it. After a struggle, he finally succeeded. Just then, Yang Chen arrived, complimenting his brother's improvement with the sword. Zio Kue asked about Yang Chen's well-being to which Yang Chen confidently replied that a bit of thunder would not quickly kill him. Xiao Kue suggested they continue to hunt monsters together. After three days of exams, Wen Zhenming approached Yang Chen, noting that nobody had allied with him. Yang Chen warned him to stay out of his way. Wen Zhenming persistently questioned how many beasts Yang Chen had killed. Suddenly, an authoritative figure emerged, instructing everyone to deliver their loot to his master. The master announced that groups hunting more than three spiritual beasts would pass the preliminary test. When Jenaming, Yu Muxu, and Chen Zio's team had successfully hunted seven spirit beasts, thus passing the test. Then, Zio Kue presented his loot, leaving everyone in shock. When Jenaming felt extremely nervous upon seeing the large loot bag that Yang Chen and his brother carried, they placed their loot in front of their master and began to open it. The sight of their loot shocked everyone, it resembled a mountain of treasures. The examiner started to count their loot while their master announced that the giant and Yang Chen team had successfully killed 90 spiritual beasts and obtained 5 spiritual herbs, thus passing the exam. When Zhenaming wondered how they could achieve such a feat, the master instructed everyone to prepare for the next round. Yang Chen turned to his brother and pondered what rewards the academy would grant them for collecting 90 spiritual beasts. Senior sister Lai Qinglin appeared and inquired about Yang Chen's achievement. Yang Chen confidently reminded her that he had already proclaimed himself a great heavenly master with unfathomable power. Senior sister Lai attributed their success to Jian Wu Jiao. She reminded Yang Chen that although they had passed the first round as a team, they would have to perform individually in the next round. Yang Chen reassured her not to worry, expressing confidence in his abilities. Xiao Kue remarked that Yang Chen had killed over half of the 90 spiritual beasts, but Yang Chen dismissed it as trivial. Xiao Kue encouraged him to do his best in the next round. The master announced that those who had passed the first round should gather the following day for the next round, and their parents were expected to be present to witness their performance. Xiao Kue asked Yang Chen if their father would also come but Yang Chen doubted it. Xiao Kue mentioned that their grandfather would be pleased if they passed the inner academy exams. However, Yang Chen clarified that passing the exam would allow them to learn cultivation techniques and martial arts. The next day, everyone was present, including the parents of the candidates. Xiao Kue informed Yang Chen that their father had also arrived to see his son's performance. They approached their father to greet him, but he uttered a shocking statement, if both failed to enter the courtyard this time he would disown them as his sons. This revelation left both Yang Chen and Xiao Kui stunned. Yang Chen's father inquired of Xiao Zhu about the rumors he had heard regarding Yang Chen's seventh level of body tempering. Xiao Zhu promptly informed him that it was merely hearsay. Yang's father reprimanded him for disrespecting Xiao Zhu concerning his daughter-in-law. Yu Maxu's father, Yu Kian, became angry with Yang Zhenai for referring to her as his daughter-in-law. Speculation circulated that Yang Chen had been hospitalized for three years and remained at the first level of the body tempering realm. They labeled Yang Chen as a failure and contrasted him with a girl from the Yu family, who possessed exceptional martial arts skills and had achieved the third level of body tempering realm in her cultivation. 
they presumed that Yang Chen was unworthy of marrying such a successful girl. Additionally, they dismissed Yang Chen's martial soul truth as a mere rumor, questioning whether his martial spirit was even awakened or if it was still dormant. They refused to believe that a practitioner of heavenly Taoist arts could spend three years at the first level of body tempering. Yang Chen's father grew furious at this situation and warned Yang Chen that if he were to lose, he would be killed by him. The test master clarified that the assessment from the previous day was the entrance test, while the current day would involve the official exams. These exams consisted of three stages, and those who passed the third stage would be promoted to the inner court. Xiao Zhu informed Yang Chen that they managed to secure first place but cautioned him not to expect the upcoming tests to be as straightforward. Yang Chen encouraged him to continue striving for first place. The test master explained that the academy would consider the overall results and reward the top 10 performers. He mentioned that the first place winner would receive a dragon pill, causing everyone to rejoice. The dragon pill was renowned as the masterpiece of the great warrior of the Elmires and originated from the royal capital. It possessed the ability to refine the physique significantly and enhance strength presenting an excellent chance for those stuck in the mundane body realm to break through its limitations. The master announced that the second and third place winners would each receive an essence pill, while the fourth through tenth places would be granted ten small elixir pills each. Yang Chen felt elated and desired to obtain that pill, even though he understood the arduous and time-consuming journey it would entail. Suddenly, the crowd's attention shifted to Kai and Lingxi, and Guan Minghao, the two most gifted individuals in the outer courtyard who seemed to make a splendid couple. Praise for their qualities abounded. Kayan possessed both an attractive appearance and remarkable talent. Kayan Lingxi approached Yang Chen, sparking a conversation between the two. This caused Guan Minghao to grow angry. Yang Chen playfully teased Guan, implying that there was a romantic connection between Kayan Lingxi and himself. The crowd indulged in gossip, suggesting that Guan had been interested in Kayan Lingxi but had faced numerous rejections. As the first round commenced, it became a test of strength. The test master instructed all participants to exert their utmost power upon the power pillar before the examination. Each beam of light within the pillar symbolized a hundred jinn of force. The participants needed to raise the light by one foot to pass the test. Guan taunted Yang Chen, suggesting he would give up before the test. In response, Yang Chen playfully taunted him back. The master was recording the rate, with most weights ranging from 850 pounds to 900 pounds, all unrated. Everyone felt terrified and nervous due to the high number of unqualified participants in the first round of formal evaluation, finding it incredibly challenging. However, one individual set a record of 1,000 pounds, thus qualifying. The other two tasks proved to be equally tricky. Sidu Ping astonished his colleagues by achieving a record-breaking weight of 22 pounds. Another man explained that Sidu Ping hailed from the renowned Sidu family, known for their natural strength and mastery of the powerful Vajra technique. Hence, it was relatively easy for him to achieve such a remarkable feat. He elaborated on the Sidhu family's wealth, mentioning that the boy had consumed numerous body-hardening pills. Yang Chen informed Ji Kai and Lingxi that Sidhu Ping, despite spending three years in the medicine jar, could only muster 2,000 pounds of punching power, a testament to his family's wasted potential in the Vajra technique. Lingxi, intrigued, challenged Yang Chen to surpass that record and proposed a bet. She declared that if he failed to exceed 2,000 pounds, he would have to run around the city of KOG naked. In return, she promised to grant him any wish if he succeeded. Filled with confidence, Yang Chen responded that if he emerged victorious, Lingxi would have to kiss him. After some contemplation, Lingxi agreed, sealing the bet. It was Guan Minghao's turn, and everyone eagerly awaited his performance, wondering how he would deliver a single blow of such force. Should Guan employ Guanxin Mianjing, his combat power would double. To their astonishment, they discovered he possessed a sixth-level body tempering realm enabling him to achieve a remarkable record of 31 pounds, leaving everyone awestruck. Next was Jian Wujiao's turn. Yang Chen advised him to unleash his full strength. The audience and Guan were surprised to witness Jian Wujiao's sixth-level body tempering realm. However, just as the excitement built, the master shouted, revealing an issue with the force measurement column. CH13. Everyone was taken aback by his performance and pondered if Jian was more powerful than Guan Minghao. Jian's father beamed joy at the sight of his son's achievement. Yang Chen, filled with excitement, proclaimed Jian as a king. He informed Lingxi that Jian's prowess was due to his influence. It was now Lingxi's turn. With all her might, she set a new record of 29 pounds. The audience was stunned by her performance, realizing she fell short compared to Guan Minghao. 
However, Yang Chen understood that Ji Kai and Linxi lacked strength, and her cultivation level only reached the peak of the fifth level of the body tempering realm. If she were to advance to the sixth level, her punching power would undoubtedly surpass Guan Minghao's. Now it was Yang Chen's turn. Linxi observed his unwavering confidence. Initially, Yang Chen's movements seemed awkward, leading to laughter from everyone. Suddenly, they witnessed Yang Chen executing a flawless move. This was only achievable when one's bones were refined enough to mobilize the muscles and emit a vibrating sound throughout the body. When Jianming became furious as he did not anticipate such a performance from Yang Chen, Linxi, too, felt angered, suspecting that Yang Chen had deceived her. Guan Minghao believed that even at the fifth level of body tempering, Yang Chen would not be capable. However, he was astounded when Yang Chen unleashed another incredible move. Yang Chen delivered an exceptional punch, setting a new record of 3,500 pounds and qualifying for the next stage. Muxu and Wen were left dumbfounded. When Jianming realized that Yang Chen possessed only brute force and might not be a worthy opponent. Following the performance, Yang Chen noticed that Linxi was absent. He spotted her fleeing into the forest, trying to evade him. The senior sister was both surprised and elated, as she recalled that just two weeks prior, the temperate body culture base of level 1 had now been elevated to level 5. She realized that Yang Chen possessed exceptional abilities. The first round had concluded, and those who had passed the exam could participate in the next day's test. Giant approached Yang Chen and inquired about the upcoming examination. Filled with joy, Yang Chen told him it might involve individual battles. Jian then asked about Yang Chen's grandfather, wondering if he would be present the following day. Yang Chen assured him that his grandfather would indeed come to see them. Simultaneously, Guanzi, who held the head position in the Guan family and was also the father of Guan Minghao, approached Yan Min. Yan Min, the master of the White Tiger Pavilion and one of the four inner court masters at the Kao Martial Arts Academy, received Guanzi. Guanzi expressed his admiration for Yan's profound level of cultivation. Both Guanzi and Yan Min engaged in joint practice within the inner courtyard. Yan reassured Guanzi that after the examination, Ming Hao would be accepted into the White Tiger Pavilion, and Yan himself would become Ming Hao's mentor. Guanzi instructed Ming Hao to pay his respects to Master Yan. Inquiring about the rumors, Guanzi asked Yan if he was the proctor for the third round test. Yan confirmed that the Kyanlong pill must have originated from Ming Hao. The subsequent day, Jian and Yang Chen's father were elated about their accomplishments. Their father mentioned that the older man missed them and informed them they could return home a few days after the exams. Additionally, their father advised them to keep their hidden abilities concealed, as the older man had advised. The master disclosed that the second round would evaluate the students' hearts. This left everyone perplexed. Suddenly, a man created a light hole in the clouds. The master instructed all the students to enter the heart refinement formation before the exam commenced. He explained that those who preserved their hearts unblemished and completed all five levels would pass. Each student entered the hole and found themselves in a designated test area. Yang Chen encountered a lion and bears approaching him, but he recognized it as an illusion. He quickly overcame the first three levels and then stumbled upon a door behind which he discovered girls attempting to entice him. The individuals who failed were the ones who dropped from the zone. The master of the inner courtyard, Qinglong Pavilion, spoke to the Holy Lord of the Sword, acknowledging that his new disciple was quite impressive, as he managed to pass the four levels in just a few minutes. Kayan Baeguang, Kayan Linxi's father, believed that despite his young age, even if he were flawless like an embryo, he should not let his guard down when faced with difficulties. He continued to emphasize that the world only recognizes the pursuit of pure martial talent, neglecting the importance of the martial heart. Kayan Baeguang stated that one would eventually regret lacking a strong martial heart, regardless of their high cultivation level. They observed Kayan Linxi, Jian Wu Jiao, and Guan Minghao successfully overcoming all three levels. However, Yang Chen seemed in trouble as he was caught in the girl's thoughts and struggled to escape falling into their traps. He eventually realized that they were deceitful. Furthermore, Linxi attempted to kiss him, causing him further entanglement. The masters noticed his predicament. The master of the inner courtyard, Qinglong Pavilion, reassured the sword saint that Yang Chen's youthful vigor naturally led him to be enticed by beauty. He cited the ancient sages who claimed a true hero could overcome such a lore. Yang Chen eventually returned to reality, proclaiming the Heaven Sutra break and successfully passed level 4. Guan Minghao followed suit and entered level 4, armed with the artifact given to him by his master, ensuring his confidence and securing first place. He also passed level 4. Yang Chen then progressed to level 5, where he encountered skeletons. He remarked that Honey and his sister might influence his mind, 
but not that repulsive fish. Determined, he exclaimed, break it for me, and overcame level 5. The master of the inner courtyard remarked to the master that the martial spirit of the dusty boy was powerful and unprecedented. Even among the four pavilions of the inner courtyard, no cadet was comparable to him. Master Kyan commented that it was merely the first level of the heart-refining array. He stated that if he could break through the intermediate level at his age, he would be considered extraordinary. Yang Chen found himself inside the heart-refining array, deeply engrossed in its intricacies. The master observed that this audacious young boy possessed great ambition, attempting to decipher the secrets of the heart-refining array despite lacking the fundamental skills of carving basic patterns. Nevertheless, it presented a straightforward design and a remarkable opportunity to learn. Suddenly, everyone witnessed the emergence of the first individual from the opening. It was Guan Minghao, the first to pass the heart refinement examination. Jian Wu Jiao followed as the second, and Kian Lingxi as the third. Other successful participants soon joined them, with Yang Chen being the last. Jian questioned Yang Chen, asking why he was slower even though he wasn't feeling unwell. Yang Chen replied to his brother, revealing their newfound wealth. The master arrived and informed everyone about the third round of the examination in the inner courtyard. Those who had obtained temporary test qualifications were instructed to follow him. Leading them near a tower, Yuan Min, the Lord of the White Tiger Pavilion, announced that he was in charge of the third round. He explained that in this assessment, only the lower five floors of the Four Spirit Pagoda would be accessible. Qualification would be granted upon passing the first floor, thereby promoting individuals to the inner courtyard. However, if they aspired to compete for a place among the top ten in the great filial piety, they would need to give their utmost effort. Minghao displayed unwavering confidence, believing that regardless of the competitor's endeavors, the position of head armor could only belong to him. The exam commenced, and as Yang Chen entered through the door, he discovered a forest. A sword-wielding man appeared, prepared to strike him down, but Yang Chen assessed his weakness, double-quenching, and promptly retaliated, throwing him aside. Subsequently, a wolf approached and was swiftly defeated by Yang Chen's punch. The masters wondered who could have infiltrated the third floor so swiftly. One of the masters remarked that the Guan family child was exceptional and a rare prodigy. Yuan Min explained that at that moment, most students were still struggling with the first floor's cultivation, making Guan Minghao's rapid advancement to the third floor a testament to his significantly higher overall strength. Minghao continued his battle with the wolf, proudly showcasing his inner armor, a yellow level low-grade treasure bestowed upon him by his master, which made passing the second level a breeze. Everyone noticed someone on the third floor once again. It was none other than Kian Lingxi and Jian Wujiao. Only they were capable of keeping up with Guan Minghao's swift pace. Yang Chen ascended to the third floor of the ancient pagoda and was immediately ambushed by two assailants. Yang Chen quickly deduced that they possessed remarkable speed and were puppets of the quadruple body quenching technique. Despite their synchrony, the skirmish proved more arduous than facing opponents in the fifth quenching layer. Yang Chen retaliated with a forceful assault, swiftly dispatching both adversaries and advancing to the fourth floor. To his surprise, upon completing the daunting scripture run, his vision sharpened, and the enemy's speed appeared diminished. On the fourth floor, he encountered two formidable, bloodthirsty bears. Yang Chen initially presumed they were regular earth bears with five-layer body tempering, but soon realized they presented a significant challenge. The presence of an individual on the fourth floor surprised everyone, who assumed it must be Guan Minghao. However, senior sister believed it could be Yang Chen. At the same time, the master pointed out that all disciples unable to pass the first level had already exited, implying that those who remained had completed the assessment. One of the masters mentioned that the number of promoted inner court disciples in this year's rigorous examination was less than 200, a significantly smaller figure compared to previous years. Another master noted that although the quantity was low, the young talents displayed exceptional potential, making it one of the most promising periods in decades. Yuan Min expressed hope that those who continued their ascent possessed a realistic understanding of their abilities, as even if they became inner courtyard students, they would be deemed useless if they ended up disabled. An hour later, five more individuals emerged from the pagoda. Sidu Ping failed and chose to leap from the third level, having experienced the terror within the ancient structure. It became common knowledge that only four people remained inside. A voice erupted, questioning the identities of Guan Minghao, Jian Wuk, and Kian Lingxi's identities and wondering who the fourth person was. Everyone was astonished to discover Yang Chen, who had yet to emerge, was the elusive fourth individual. 
Muxu, too, was taken aback by Yang Chen's power. Suddenly, Kai and Lynx he triumphantly emerged while Yang Chen continued his battle with the bears. He realized that defeating the cunning creatures would prove challenging, prompting him to employ a badge. Delivering a powerful punch, he dispatched one of the bears. However, the other continued its pursuit. Meanwhile, Ming Hao struggled against his bear opponents. Amidst the chaos, onlookers witnessed two individuals ascending to the fifth floor. A minute ago, someone broke into the fifth floor. Yan Min stated that being able to break into the fifth floor was sufficient evidence to proclaim Guan Ming Hao as the foremost genius of this outer court. Master Kui Jai expressed doubts, suggesting it might have been someone other than Ming Hao. Yan Min questioned Kui Jai's skepticism, prompting Kui Jai to explain the difficulty in identifying the person who ascended to the fifth floor. In response, Yan dared Kui Jai to make a wager. Kui Jai inquired about the reason behind the bet, and Yan Min explained that if he emerged victorious, Kui Jai's student would become Yan's. Kui Jai agreed to the wager and informed Yan that his blood drinking knife would change hands if he lost. The two individuals proceeded to the fifth floor, with Yan expressing concern for Guan. Guan was engaged in a fierce battle with bears and sustained severe injuries. Despite this, he believed he was the first because the fourth floor had been exceedingly challenging. Consequently, he exited the fourth floor. Yan Min observed his grievous wounds, leaving everyone astonished. Kui Jai mentioned that Yang Chen and Jian Wuk were also on the fifth floor. Yan became extremely angry with Ming Hao. As per their bet, he handed his knife to Kui Jai. The senior sister expressed surprise upon learning that Yang Chen had made it to the fifth floor. Yang Chen discovered that the fifth level quenched earth mad bears were incredibly formidable, and his current attacks were ineffective against them. However, he knew that with the sunglasses in his possession, they would be unable to keep up with his speed. Jian, too, engaged in combat with the bears. After 15 minutes, Jian and Yang exited the fifth floor. Finally, those two individuals emerged. Gossip spread among the people, with one man in the crowd stating that henceforth, no one would dare to ridicule Yang Chen as a waste. This revelation equally took aback Moksu. Master Kui Jai announced the conclusion of the inner court assessments, with 198 individuals passing the evaluation. He stated that they would disclose the specific rankings later. Jian declared to his brother, Yang Chen, that he must have secured the first position. Yang Chen responded by mentioning that, after careful consideration, the responsibility for overseeing this grand examination had been entrusted to Guan Minghao. Yan Min declared the second place to be awarded to Jian Wuk, which infuriated Yang Chen. The third place went to Kai and Lingxi. Yang Chen's anger flared at the decision to grant first place to Guan Minghao. Yan Min confronted him, questioning his audacity to challenge their collective decision. Seething angrily, Yang Chen retorted that the adults in the inner courtyard lacked discernment. He attributed it to their lack of grace in their actions and behavior. He proclaimed to Yan that the proper leader among the great cultivators was Jian Wuk. Yang Chen was seething with anger as he voiced his grievances. He claimed that his brother Jian had achieved the first rank in the strength test and the second in the heart test and also secured the top spot in the ancient pagoda. In contrast, Guan Minghao had placed third in the strength test, fourth in the heart test, and fourth in the ancient pagoda. Yang Chen demanded an explanation from Master Yan regarding the criteria used to select the top performer in the examination. However, Master Yan Min silenced him, asserting he had no right to speak. Yang Chen vehemently accused Master Yan of being bribed by the Guan family. Incensed, Master Yan informed Yang Chen that his promotion to the inner court was now nullified. Upon hearing this, Jian Wu Jiao exclaimed that Yang Chen was much stronger than Guan Minghao, questioning the decision to revoke his grades. Observing the heated exchange, onlookers could see that the two were on the verge of a confrontation, fueling a sense of rebellion. Yan Min withdrew Jian Wu's second place qualification due to a perceived lack of respect and dignity. The second place was then awarded to Lingxi, with Sidu Ping taking third. Yan Min warned everyone that any objections or disagreements with the Academy's decision would result in expulsion from the Martial Arts Academy. The situation was met with dismay, as Yang Chen's disqualification came as a shock, considering the rigorous nature of the exam. A senior sister arrived and berated Yang Chen for his conduct. Despite the reprimands, Yang Chen laughed, prompting the sister to inform him that he had been disqualified from the inner court. She demanded an explanation for his altercation with Master Yan. Yang Chen explained that the test had been unfair and even questioned its validity within the inner courtyard. 
the sister's shouts grew louder as she condemned his behavior. She also inquired about his sudden jump from the first to the fifth level of body tempering in just two weeks. Yang Chen teasingly responded, claiming that he merely looked at her picture book daily and practiced diligently, leading to his rapid progress. Suddenly, a defense general from Kao City named Lai Yashin Duaj's Han approached them. He revealed to Yang Chen that Jian was not involved in the case. It turned out that Lai Yashin was the sister's father. Yang Chen showed his respect to Lai Yashin, who invited him to join their Blue Tiger Army, as Yang Chen had been expelled from the Kaoj Martial Arts Academy. Yang Chen politely declined, stating that he must consult his family first. Lai Yashin commended him for his performance and assured him of a place in the army whenever he was ready. The sister's father playfully suggested that Yang Chen could become his son-in-law. Seeing his prospects of entering the inner court diminished, Jian proposed that they join the Blue Tiger Army together. Yang Chen, however, acknowledged the abundance of cultivation resources within the inner court and encouraged Jian to pursue cultivation there. He revealed his intention to search for someone who had made him a promise, leaving Jian concerned about Yang Chen's continued preoccupation with women. At night, Mr. Dickens, the master of the White Tiger Pavilion, intercepted Yang Chen at the door. He inquired why Yang Chen had not been disqualified from the inner court and requested his presence. Yang Chen asked for the reason behind the summons, to which Mr. Dickens replied that it concerned Yang Chen's master. Mr. Dickens was taken aback upon learning that Kian Baiguang was Yang Chen's master. Recognizing Yang Chen's remarkable progress, Mr. Dickens realized that he had become a master himself under Kian Baiguang's tutelage. Concerned by this revelation, Mr. Dickens decided to inform his master about the situation. Yang Chen proceeded to his master, who emanated a strong aura of authority. The master was delighted to see Yang Chen and impressed by his prowess. Yang Chen contemplated participating in a martial art competition under his master's guidance. Unexpectedly, the master posed a question, surprising Yang Chen. The master inquired about Yang Chen's thoughts, which happened to align with Yang Chen's musings. The master then broached the topic of Yang Chen's lineage and noted that his resolve seemed feeble. Yang Chen confided in his master about the unjust decision. In response, the master questioned how Yang Chen could present the gum tunnel to the public if it were considered vulgar, branding it a disgrace to martial arts. Yang Chen proposed a solution to expel Yan Min from the Martial Arts Academy, to which Master Kian Baiguang revealed that Yan Min was not even an academy member, yet he resided there. Furthermore, the master criticized the notion of summoning Yang Chen when he lacked promise, deeming it cowardly. The master asked Yang Chen if he considered himself a coward and pointed out that while Yang Chen's master might be unreliable, the formidable woman greatly influenced the inner court. The master acknowledged that reasoning with woman would be futile as the rules could not be bent. However, he conveyed to Yang Chen that woman's actions implied a lack of respect for the master, urging Yang Chen to seize any opportunity to confront him. Yang Chen was astonished to discover his master's unconventional mindset. Seeking guidance, Yang Chen asked his master what he should do. The master responded that if Yang Chen remained unconvinced, he would personally seek out Yang Zi, an influential figure whose strength held sway in this world. Yang Chen inquired whether he could continue his practice here, prompting Ling Xi to intervene and deny his request. The master, asserting that Yang Chen was his disciple, instructed him to stay for a while. Yang Chen then asked his master about carving a pattern to which the master advised him first to read all the jade slips in the study if he intended to undertake the task of engraving the pattern. Yang Chen assured his master that he would study them the entire night. As Yang Chen entered the room, he found an abundance of jade slips awaiting his perusal. When Yang Chen was practicing and reading, he suddenly heard Ling Xi say she had made soup for her father. He immediately got up and headed over there. Ling Xi asked him to leave her house, and Yang Chen reminded her about their bet. She gave him a bowl of soup and departed. After enjoying the delicious soup, he resumed his practice. Half a month later, Yang Chen achieved success in Fire Burst. The master saw his accomplishment and praised him for mastering the first pattern in just half a month. Ling Xi was astonished to discover that Yang Chen was better than her despite taking a whole month. The master instructed Yang Chen to leave the study room and begin learning the gravity pattern. Yang Chen once again asked Ling Xi about their bet, but she became angry and instructed him to go and learn the gravity pattern. Another half-month passed, and Yang Chen returned to his master's house to inform him of his success. Chen saw Ling Xi and jokingly remarked that they would grow old together, which caused Ling Xi to blush. The master observed their childish behavior and thought this young kid was becoming increasingly arrogant, daring to participate in the sacrifice before him. Suddenly, they noticed a mighty eagle in the clouds. The master realized that Bai Jing Waiyuan was in trouble. 
Yang Chen asked his master about the colossal figure concealed amidst the clouds. The master imparted knowledge, identifying it as a golden luan bird and disclosing the presence of a person from Bianjing Yuan above the avian creature. Curiosity aroused within Yang Chen, leading him to delve further into the details of Bianjing Yuan. The master enlightened him, revealing the proximity of Bianjing and Kaoj cities and their shared affiliation with Tianan County. He recounted the long-standing martial arts tradition in both cities, boasting an ancient history. Additionally, he mentioned the rigorous evaluation of the post-Jin warriors' skills in these regions, encompassing activities like gambling. Intrigued by the prospect, Yong Chen expressed his desire for a challenge. Responding to his enthusiasm, the master mentioned recent reports of exceptional students emerging from the Bianjing Martial Arts Academy. He invited Yang Chen, urging him to accompany Lingxi and join the visit to Rikshuan. Meanwhile, Yan Min, Master Yan, and Ming Hao were seated together when Ming Hao's attention was captivated by the bird above, leading him to inquire about its nature. Yan Min elucidated that it was a golden bird representing Bianjing Yuan and expressed surprise at Liu's prompt arrival. Taking charge, Master Yan instructed Ming Hao to summon all the inner courtyard first-year students. In the inner courtyard square, the majestic golden bird was sighted, drawing the attention of all present. Giant Wu Jiao promptly relayed the situation to Brother Chen while the pavilion master presided over the gathering. Extending a warm welcome, the pavilion master addressed the Bianjing Yuan attendees, acknowledging their arduous journey and ushering them to settle within the inner courtyard. He emphasized that the younger generation would engage in discussions and competitions. A Bianjing representative asserted that Kaoj had failed to make notable advancements in recent years, suggesting a lack of substance. The representative challenged the pavilion master, questioning their ability to host several matches and encouraging them to commence the event. The pavilion master accepted the proposal, with the representative outlining the rules, which mirrored those of the previous competition. Each side would field five disciples who would engage in one-on-one -on -one battles. Victorious participants would progress, while the defeated would be eliminated, continuing until all five disciples on one side were eliminated. The representative sought confirmation from the pavilion master if any objections arose. Yan Min notified the pavilion master of the aggressive presence of the Bianjing Martial Arts Academy, and shared rumors of their formidable disciple. He advised the pavilion master to adapt their strategy accordingly. The pavilion master expressed confidence in their disciples, remarking on their considerable numbers this time. Recognizing the advantageous nature of the rules, the pavilion master agreed to proceed. The Bianjing representative commanded their disciple to step forward, while Yang Chen commented to Lingxi on the abundance of prodigious talents present. The leading master from Bianjing Yuan cautioned their disciples to exercise control and avoid underestimating their opponents. These words stirred anger within Ming Hao and the other disciples, fueling their determination to engage in combat fiercely. Finally, the pavilion master announced the commencement of the trinial exchange competition between Kaoj Yuan and Bianjing Yuan. The first competitor to emerge was Chu Yimung, hailing from Bianjing Yuan and possessing the fifth level of body-quenching cultivation. In response, Yan Min instructed Sidu Ping to step forward as their representative, who himself had attained the fifth level of the body tempering realm. Chu Yimung astounded the crowd with an aggressive attack employing fire type heavenly Dao techniques. Yang Chen was shocked and exclaimed that the kid appeared ordinary but was a fire heavenly Taoist. Kui Jai remarked to the pavilion master that it was no wonder the Bianjing Martial Arts Academy was so arrogant that year, they must have recruited some talented individuals. Chu Yiming attacked Sidu Ping who defended himself and stood up. Amazed, Chu Yiming noted Sidu Ping's powerful diamond art. The two engaged in another round of combat, but Sidu Ping fell far down this time. Kui Jai explained that Chu Yiming had used his skills to overpower Sidu, who possessed the formidable diamond art. Sidu Ping lost the fight, leaving the other disciples in shock, commenting on Chu Yiming's craziness and arrogance in winning the match. Yang Chen expressed frustration, stating that he couldn't stand it and that Chu Yiming's behavior was even more arrogant than a sprouting plant. Lingxi told Yang Chen that he was even more arrogant than Chu Yiming. Yang Chen thanked her, mistaking her statement as a compliment. She questioned him, pointing out that she didn't mean it as a compliment. Yang Chen clarified that he was only arrogant in front of outsiders and was just a movable brick in front of his fox spirit. Lingxi responded that when she trains, he will be her sword stake. Yang Chen dismissed the idea. Yuan Min informed Guan Minghao that he was following. Guan Minghao stepped forward to face Chu Yiming and introduced himself. Chu Yiming remarked that Guan Minghao was number one in the inner courtyard exams, which wasn't bad. 
Yang Chen laughed and agreed, stating that Chu Yiming was correct, as Guan Minghao was not bad. He further predicted that Guan Minghao would defeat Chu Yiming, adding a bit of suspense to the situation. Guan Minghao and Chu Yiming prepared to fight each other. Guan Minghao initiated an attack but missed. Linksy was shocked by Guan Minghao's speed. Yang Chen called him a flexible fatty man. Guan Minghao tried another attack but once again missed. Chu Yiming taunted him, commenting on his slowness, and swiftly attacked him from behind. Chu Yiming's master expressed delight, noting that the martial arts academy also wore the Lingbao inner armor in the competition and praising the impressive Kaoj Martial Arts Academy. Yuan Min confessed to the pavilion master that he hadn't realized Guan Minghao wore the armor. The pavilion master shouted at Guan Minghao to step down while Chu Yiming laughed and suggested they proceed with the remaining three. The disciples were left speechless by the turn of events. One of the disciples exclaimed that the Bianjing Martial Arts Academy's disciples were terrific, even after being worn out. Another disciple wondered what they should do next since Guan Minghao had lost. Chu Yiming addressed everyone, stating they still had someone else to step up and fight. He challenged them, saying they should admit defeat if no one dared to come forward. Yuan Min became angry and declared that Chu Yiming was arrogant, claiming that no one in their KOJ Yuan could match him. He specifically called out Jian Wuk, who remained silent and speechless under their gaze. Yuan Min urged Jian Wuk to step up. Jian Wuk explained to the pavilion master that he had practiced carelessly the day before and had sustained severe meridian injuries, rendering him unable to fight. Yuan Min and the other disciples were shocked by his refusal. One disciple remarked that the White Tiger Pavilion Master wanted Jian Wuk to fight, but it would be difficult for a powerful man like him. They questioned who asked him to kick Yang Chen out of the Martial Arts Academy. Another disciple mentioned that Jian Wuk was under the tutelage of the White Tiger Pavilion Master, suggesting that the master of the White Tiger Pavilion needed to intervene. Yuan Min then called for Lingxi to step up and fight. Yang Chen told her that if she couldn't defeat Chu Yiming, she should call him to save her. Chu Yiming commented that he hadn't expected such a beautiful girl to be in the Chaos Martial Academy. Kian Linksy introduced herself by name and revealed that she was at the fifth level of body quenching. Chu Yiming complimented her, saying she had a great name, and jokingly asked why she didn't spend the night with him instead, causing Yang Chen to become angry. Linksy also grew angry and showcased her talent as an array master. Chu Yiming's master wondered aloud if the Kaoj Martial Arts Academy even had an array master. Chu Yiming, disregarding Linksy's cultivation level, attacked her, but she countered with an extremely cold array. Chu Yiming and his master were shocked to witness this. Suddenly, Chu Yiming became frozen in the cold. Linksy easily won the fight, much to the delight of all the disciples. Yang Chen remarked to Jian Wuk that his sister-in-law was terrific. Jian Wuk reminded him that he had previously called her a spare tire. Yang Chen dismissed that comment, stating she was now his real sister-in-law. Two men helped the frozen Chu Yiming off the stage. Now, Chu Plate from Bianjin Yuan stepped forward to fight. Linksy attacked again with her cold array, but Chu Plate quickly defended himself with his sword. Infuriated, Chu Plate advanced, aiming to kill Linksy. Chu Plate expressed his surprise at encountering a female squadron master and suggested that Linksy consider joining him. Linksy warned him that he would also face dire consequences if he didn't stop his actions. Chu Plate, taken aback, believed that Linksy possessed formidable powers. Linksy advised him not to assume he was superior. She returned to Yang Chen and complained about Chu Plate bullying her. Yang Chen was surprised by the situation. Yan Min informed the pavilion master that only one swordsman was left above the fifth level of body quenching. The pavilion master decided to put them in a difficult situation. Yang Chen requested permission from the pavilion master to participate next. Yan Min expressed surprise at Yang Chen's eagerness. The pavilion master allowed Yang Chen to proceed, acknowledging his considerable strength. Yang Chen entered the battlefield and confronted Chu Plate, reminding him that his mistreatment of Ling Xi would not go unpunished. Chu Plate grew furious. The disciples watched with concern as they had initially assumed their defeat was inevitable. However, some still believed in Yang Chen and cheered for him. Chu Plate questioned if Yang Chen was seeking death, to which Yang Chen boldly declared that he wouldn't die simply because Chu Plate yelled at him, emphasizing his disbelief in Chu Plate's abilities. Yang Chen mockingly referred to him as an idiot. In rage, Chu Plate attacked Yang Chen with his sword, but Yang Chen skillfully defended himself. The disciples urged caution. Yang Chen then retaliated, landing a decisive blow on Chu Plate, causing him to fall. Yang Chen approached him, delivering strikes to his face while taunting him, claiming that he would render him foolish. Suddenly, Chu Plate's master shouted for the fight to stop. 
However, Yang Chen argued that Chu Plate had not admitted defeat, noting that his mouth was injured and he couldn't shout to admit his loss. Yang Chen apologized for not noticing that Chu Plate's mouth was decayed, causing Ling Xi to laugh. Chu Plate's master believed Yang Chen was taking the situation too far. The disciples cheered for Yang Chen, calling out his name. Yang Chen confidently declared that it was his turn to fight. Chu Plate's master instructed Jiang Hong to enter the field and teach Yang Chen a lesson. Jiang Hong, who was at the sixth stage of body quenching, questioned Yang Chen if he thought another sixth level quenching body would be more substantial. Jiang Hong's master believed that Yang Chen was exhibiting too much arrogance. A female disciple expressed her admiration for Yang Chen's craziness. Jiang Hong acknowledged that Yang Chen could defeat Chu Plate and deserved his serious attention. This surprised the disciples, leading them to speculate if Yang Chen was another heavenly Taoist. Ling Xi asked if Yang Chen was truly cultivating a martial spirit. Jian Wuk inquired about the martial array, to which she explained that it involved a forbidden array and a powerful unique martial array soul. Jian Wuk expressed concern for his brother's well-being. Zhang Hong questioned whether forbidden cultivation interested Yang Chen. Yang Chen began to demonstrate his abilities. Jiang Hong wondered if Yang Chen wanted to break free from the constraints and if he, too, was a master cultivator. Jiang Hong attacked Yang Chen with a stick moon, asserting that no one could break through his unlimited weapon strikes. However, Yang Chen quickly defended himself, stating that the flaws in his cultivation method were not challenging to detect. Jiang Hong was shocked and questioned how this was possible. It was now Yang Chen's turn to counter-attack, leaving Zhang Hong astonished as he realized that Yang Chen was also a master cultivator. Yang Chen launched a powerful attack, rendering Zhang Hong immobile. He swiftly approached Zhang Hong and delivered a forceful fuhu fist blow to his face, causing Zhang Hong to fall near his master. Zhang Hong's master marveled at how this kid could break through Zhang Hong's forbidden cultivation. He hadn't anticipated such talent in this year's Song and Wu Academy. Ning Hao was astonished by Yang Chen's immense power. The disciples erupted into shouts and cheers, chanting Yang Chen's name. Yang Chen then asked if anyone from the Bianjing Waiyuan Academy wished to fight. The master of the Bianjing Waiyuan Academy concluded that Zhang Hong and the others had lost, and the remaining two were likely not formidable opponents for Yang Chen either. The Bianjing master acknowledged that according to the competition rules, Yang Chen was the sole participant from the Kaoj Waiyuan Academy. Yang Chen confidently stated that it was enough for him to defeat them all. The Bianjing master clarified that he was not denying the rules but simply stating the truth. Yang Chen suggested switching participants. This angered Yan Min, who warned Yang Chen against making decisions on his behalf. Yang Chen called his brother Jian Wuk and instructed him to fight. Jian Wuk obeyed his brother's command and entered the battlefield, addressing the remaining opponents. The Bianjing master commented that Jian Wuk was even more arrogant than the others and ordered the remaining two to attack him. Zhang Hong remarked that fighting the two brothers wouldn't be easy, but his master grew furious, demanding they proceed and kill the arrogant boy. The remaining opponents brandished their swords as Jian Wuk drew his own. Jian Wuk initiated the attack, causing their swords to shatter. This turn of events took aback the Bianjing master. Yang Chen called out to the Bianjing Waiyuan Academy, challenging them to return for another round of battle. However, the Bianjing master and his academy had vanished. The crowd rejoiced at this outcome. The pavilion master declared that the martial arts academy had previously mistreated Yang Chen. On behalf of the academy, he rescinded the previous punishment and formally invited Yang Chen to join the Qinglong Pavilion. Yang Chen questioned whether there would be any acknowledgement or apology for unjustly expelling him from the martial arts academy without guilt. The pavilion master was left speechless and reassured Yang Chen that the examination was in the past, urging him not to worry. He permitted Yang Chen to enter the Qinglong Pavilion, promising appropriate compensation for him. Surprised by this turn of events, Yang Chen questioned if everything was resolved. Yan Min inquired from the pavilion master how he could discuss a student from outside the academy, cautioning against the belief that being the disciple of the Sword Saint granted him unchecked privileges in the Kaoj Martial Academy. The master swiftly silenced Yan Min, dismissing his words as nonsense. Yang Chen expressed his respect for the pavilion master and acknowledged the lessons he had been taught. He revealed that he had been unjustly expelled from the martial arts academy without fault in a previous battle, shocking all the disciples. Yang Chen declared that many academies were awaiting his enrollment, signaling his withdrawal. The speechless master remarked that the two youngsters were incredibly stubborn. Furiously, Yan Min chastised Yang Chen and Jian Wuk, accusing them of opposing the world. He questioned if an apology would prompt them to reconsider their decision and return to the academy. 
Young Chen halted and inquired about the matter, questioning if Pavilion Master Bei Hu had any further plans to teach them a lesson. He challenged whether Pavilion Master Bei Hu dared to do so. In rage, Yan Min moved aggressively towards them, but Ling Si intervened, urging him to cease the fight and questioning if he genuinely wished to bully her. Yan Min angrily demanded that Ling Si get out of the way, asserting that the two boys disrespected their teachers and deserved to be expelled. Ling Si warned Yan Min that he would come to regret his actions. Yan Min retorted, dismissing it as a joke, asserting the authority of the Kaoj Martial Arts Academy, and even claiming that her father's presence wouldn't warrant any restrictions on teaching the students. At that moment, the Lord Swordsman arrived and overheard their conversation. Yan Min attempted to explain, but the Lord Swordsman struck him, causing him to fall. The Lord Swordsman ordered him to be silent and leave. Yang Chen was elated by this turn of events. The Pavilion Master assured Lord Swordsman they would resolve the misunderstanding with his students. The Lord Swordsman inquired if compensation was in order. The Pavilion Master chuckled and assured him they could discuss a plan that would satisfy Lord Swordsman and Yang Chen. Lord Swordsman suggested adding some unpleasantness to the plan, expressing doubt about the Pavilion Master's ability to cockultivation ability Master stated that he would explain the situation to the President upon his return and promised to address the damages caused by Yan Min. With that, the Lord Swordsman departed. The Pavilion Master contemplated the incident, having heard that Lord Swordsman had suffered severe injuries. He hadn't anticipated the Lord Swordsman to possess such strength. The pavilion master instructed Yan Min to stand up and report to the president while Yang Chen entered the Lord Swordsman room. Yang Chen greeted him and expressed his inability to cultivate even the most basic techniques, asking if he could learn some martial realms from him. After listening to this, Yang Chen became happy. The master told him he wouldn't teach martial arts until he reached the realm. This revelation left Yang Chen feeling awkward, leading him to call his master a stinky one. In response, his master explained that the body-quenching state focused on strengthening the body and laying a solid foundation for martial arts. He asked Yang Chen whether pursuing powerful martial arts seemed somewhat backward. The master revealed his intention to pass on his cultivation method to Chen but realized that his cultivation method was extraordinary, so he abandoned the idea. Yang Chen started to doubt his master's realm of martial arts. The master emphasized that practicing Kung Fu was of utmost importance for a humble disciple, especially a Taoist. As for tactics and martial arts, the teacher believed that even if it took a considerable amount of time to cultivate authentic martial realm arts, it wouldn't be worth the loss. Yang Chen promised his master to remember all of this. Suddenly, someone arrived at the door and handed a parcel to Yang Chen. When he opened it before his master, he discovered Gaiyu and Bengxian pills, a Kyanlong pill, and some medicinal materials. Yang Chen desired to consume them all, but his master informed him that he couldn't take the pills until reaching the seventh level of body quenching. The master instructed Yang Chen to go to Kaoj Mountains to practice for a while with Jian Wuk and Kyan Lingxi. Yang Chen felt joy upon hearing Lingxi's name, prompting his master to ask him to make a promise. The master instructed Yang Chen to protect Lingxi in every situation, and he agreed. They set off towards the mountains. After ten days, Lingxi remarked to them that they were exceptional since Jian had reached the seventh level and Yang Chen had reached the eighth level of body quenching in such a short time. Yang Chen inquired about Lingxi's level but admitted that she wasn't progressing as rapidly as them. Suddenly, Yang Chen spotted a Senchenghua flower in the forest and called Lingxi and Jian to see it. Lingxi was amazed that the legendary Senchenghua flower had appeared there. Jian asked Yang Chen about the flower, and Lingxi explained that according to legend, the Empress of Emperor Yulong was descended from the human race and belonged to the Tianmo clan. In a tragic turn of events, the Emperor was killed by the mortal enemies of the human race, the Shenchuan clan. Seeking revenge, Emperor Yulong succeeded but suffered severe injuries in the process. Lingxi continued, stating that after defeating the Emperor of the Shenchuan clan, he never returned. Grief stricken, Emperor Yu used his supreme supernatural powers to collect the essences of life from all the flowers in the world and transform them into a sea of flowers to accompany the Emperor's burial. Lingxi explained that the Senchenghua flower symbolized unwavering love and beauty representing marriage. Yang Chen remarked that it seemed fate that they had encountered the Senchenghua flower and suggested they make a vow before it, promising to never separate in this lifetime and grow old together. He embraced Lingxi and Jian tightly, and they all fell to the ground. Suddenly, they heard someone approaching. They were observing from the bushes as two men, Lai Junming and Wang Hongwei, approached. Having heard the news about the relics, they were actively searching for them. Lai Junming requested Wang Hongwei to survey the area ahead. 
Wang spotted a Sinsheng Yue flower, a rare find. Commenting on its rarity, Lai Junming cautioned Wang against cutting the flower, but before he could proceed, Yang Chen intervened, wielding the giant sword to stop Wang. Wang inquired about Yang Chen's actions, prompting Yang Chen to explain that the Sinsheng Yue flower held significance as a wish-granting flower. He urged Wang not to harm it. However, Wang Hongwei's demeanor grew disrespectful and insisted on cutting the flower. Yang Chen viewed him as impolite and arrogant. Without warning, Wang attacked Yang Chen, who vowed to teach him proper manners. Determined to engage in combat, Wang wielded the sword giant as Yang Chen swiftly confronted him. Witnessing the altercation, Lai Junming attempted to strike Yang Chen, but the giant sword blocked his path. Lai Junming discovered that giant was on the eighth layer of body tempering. He was surprised at encountering such a young man like Jian in such a remote location. Jian Wuk responded by mentioning that there were many other unexpected things. Yang Chen defeated Wang Hongwei and taught him how to speak respectfully to others. Yang Chen then asked Ling Xi and Jian's brother, Jian, to accompany him and leave the place. Lai Junming tried to stop them, becoming arrogant because they had harmed his Golden Eagle family members. Yang Chen asked him what he wanted, to which Lai Junming demanded that Yang Chen reveal his name so that he would face the consequences of his actions. Suddenly, Jian swiftly moved and struck Lai Junming causing him to fall. Lynx he urged Jian and Chen to quickly leave Kaoj Mountains because they had killed someone from the Golden Eagle family, warning that they could face trouble if they stayed. Young Chen asked Lynxie about the power of the Golden Eagle family, and Lynxie informed him that they were much more potent than the Martial Arts Academy. Yang Chen remained composed, expressing his belief that he had even more reason to eliminate them, stating that he didn't want to keep two troublemakers around. Jian informed Yang Chen that they had intended to destroy his love flower. This angered Lingxi, who left the scene. Eventually, they arrived at their master's location, only to find a man waiting there. They initially believed it was a member of the Golden Eagle family arriving swiftly at their doorstep. However, the man had come to pick up Lingxi. Master Kian instructed him to leave, as the time wasn't right. The man mentioned that Lingxi was extraordinary and had reached the seventh layer of body tempering. Master requested that he depart and return on the first day of the new year. The man decided to stay in Kaoj City for a few days. Concerned, Yang Chen asked the master for information. The master revealed that after the new year, Ling Xi would return to Duan Yuhu Mansion, to her mother's side. He advised Yang Chen that he must become renowned in the East within five years if he truly loved her. Yang Chen promised his master to do just that. The master shared that he had once achieved great fame as a sword saint in Tianan, but sadly, his sword martial soul had been destroyed, forcing him to hide in the remote Kaoj city for survival. Fortunately, Lingxi had been with him for three years, which was sufficient. Intrigued, Yang Chen questioned his master about how his martial soul had been destroyed. Yang Chen said to his master that he would avenge this incident. His master advised him to focus solely on practicing hard and improving his cultivation. Yang Chen then asked his master if, in the future, he could not only protect Lingxi but also himself. The master responded, explaining to Yang Chen that he was still a young kid and that the world was much bigger than he believed. Undeterred, Yang Chen decided to become stronger and sought out Lingxi. He informed Lingxi that they had made a lifelong contract in front of the Sensheng flower, ensuring that no one could harm her in the future. Lingxi, somewhat skeptical, called him shameless. In response, Yang Chen handed Lingxi an air-dried Sensheng flower and instructed her to take care of it in his absence. Lingxi's father, the Master Sword Saint, happened to be present. He advised Lingxi to hold on to the flower for now, as she might see Yang Chen again. Lingxi expressed her doubts about Yang Chen's seriousness to her father. The master reassured her that Yang Chen was sincere, and that every word he spoke was severe. Lingxi accused her father of being led astray by Yang Chen. The master insisted that he knew Yang Chen's character well, and would stay with him once Lingxi left. Lingxi threatened to stay if her father didn't want her to go. The master explained that her mother was also very lonely and would benefit Lingxi to spend more time with her in the future. He blamed himself for everything, claiming his uselessness and inability to do anything. However, Lingxi held her father in high regard as the strongest person in her heart. The master acknowledged that there were many people better than him. He then asked Lingxi about her feelings for Yang Chen, to which she denied having any. The master observed that she was acting against her will, noting that although Yang Chen lacked a prominent background, his talent was exceptional, and he possessed a rare temperament. The master understood that Lingxi would follow her heart. Lingxi pondered whether Yang Chen was indeed as remarkable as her father claimed. Meanwhile, in Kaoj City, a golden eagle approached. 
Giant and Chen noticed that the eagle belonged to a family that seemed to be heading towards their city, leaving Giant concerned about whether they were being sought after. They both went to their respective homes. Upon opening the door, their father greeted Yang Chen and Giant. Yang Chen informed his father that they had returned from their martial arts academy, noticing that his father's nose was blue. Curiosity peaked, he inquired about it. Suddenly, a girl's voice called out his father's name, prompting him to rush outside. Yang Chen and Jian watched their mother, Ling Humoyan, approach them angrily, brandishing a stick. However, upon seeing both of them, her demeanor changed to joy. Yang Chen questioned his mother about her anger, and she inquired about the incident where he was expelled from the inner courtyard, asking if Yuan Min had bullied him. Yang Chen reassured his mother, explaining that the situation had been resolved. To confirm, she turned to Jian who affirmed that the matter had already been settled and the martial arts academy had provided ample compensation regarding cultivation resources. Meanwhile, Yang Menju, Yang Chen's younger sister, arrived and happily reunited with her brothers. They engaged in lively conversation and embraced each other. Chen Yangjian, the head of the Yang family and Yang Chen's grandfather, then arrived. They paid their respects to him before being invited to a room where the grandfather questioned them about their year at the martial arts academy. His grandfather specifically reminded Yang Chen that while having a good heart was commendable, excessive arrogance was unacceptable. The grandfather expressed his hope that Yang Chen would remain steadfast, proud, and diligent after the upcoming New Year's Day. Yang Chen grasped the meaning behind his grandfather's words. The grandfather further advised them both to be cautious, as the adverse effects of cultivating the overlord heavenly demon art had already started to manifest. With the advancement of their cultivation, the pain they would endure would multiply. He urged them not to succumb to the temptations of the demonic realm. He requested them not to manifest their martial soul for the next three years, even in the face of death. Giant assured him that he would bear this in mind. Later that evening, they gathered around the dinner table, where Yang Chen's mother remained upset with his father. Meanwhile, the grandfather celebrated the achievements of Yang Chen and Giant Wuk, who had successfully advanced to the eighth layer of body tempering. Together, they rejoiced in their accomplishments. Suddenly, a knock echoed at the door, prompting Yang Chen's mother to instruct him to answer it. As he opened the door, he discovered Kai and Lingxi standing there. He was shocked to see her. Lingxi asked him if he had forgotten her. Yang Chen told her they had only been apart for three days, so he asked her if she had missed him. She told him that she was leaving tomorrow and wanted to look at Kaoj City again before she left. Before she knew it, she had arrived here. Yang Chen inquired if she wanted him to accompany her around Kaoj City. He said that Kaoj City is small, but the night view on New Year's evening is still beautiful. She mentioned that she hadn't eaten anything yet. He took her inside to meet his parents. Yang Chen's sister found her beautiful, and Lingxi expressed her love for the younger sibling. Yang Chen's mother welcomed her and asked Yang Chen to introduce her. He explained that she was his senior sister and his master's daughter. His mother extended a warm welcome and offered her a meal. Yang Chen's dad teased him, asking if she was only his sister. They all shared a drink. At night, Lingxi and Yang Chen went for a walk to visit Kaoj City. Suddenly, Yang Chen rushed towards a beautiful tree. Lingxi asked if it was a Gu Feng tree, and Yang Chen asked if she knew its meaning. Lingxi inquired about the meaning, and Yang Chen explained that the Gu Feng tree was born in the cold and the heart and leaves are interdependent. He told her that praying more to this tree could cure lovesickness. Lingxi blushed, and Yang Chen held her hand, bringing her closer to him. They kissed under the tree as he assured her he would find her. She listened to him, holding his hand, while he pointed out the bright moon in the sky, accompanied by the Gu Feng tree. He asked if they should get down to business, and Lingxi asked about it. He suggested worshipping heaven and earth privately. She got angry, kicked his feet, and left. Meanwhile, Ming Hao was serving the members of the Golden Eagle family. Lai Junru, the young master of the Golden Eagle family, asked Ming Hao if he had any updates about the Kaoj Mountains. Ming Hao informed her that the powerhouses of their Guan family should have already entered the inner circle to investigate. Lai Junru ordered him to send more workforce, mentioning that she had spent the new year in a desolate place for that vision. If nothing came out of it, she would consider herself unlucky. Ming Hao assured her that the vision was very likely to be true. He revealed that his master was the master of the White Tiger Pavilion in the Kaoj Martial Arts Academy, and had already conducted numerous investigations. The thunder that appeared during the inner courtyard examination at the academy was a sign of impending treasures. Lingxi was still angry with Yang Chen. Suddenly, Lai caught sight of a mesmerizing woman outside the window. Astonished, she exclaimed to Ming Hao that she hadn't anticipated encountering such a stunning lady in such a rundown place. Curious, she inquired about her from Ming Hao. 
Ling Hao responded, stating that she was Yang Chen, an ordinary student from their Kaoj Martial Arts Academy. He mentioned that Yang Chen had been recently expelled from the academy but had become a disciple of the renowned sword saint Kian Bogwal. Ming Hao further explained that the woman in question was Kian Lingxi, the first beauty of their Kaoj Martial Arts Academy, and the daughter of Kian Bogwal. Lai remarked that with just a few unconventional sword skills, Yang Chen dared to venerate the sword saint. She informed Ming Hao that Kian Bogwong was extremely famous in their Tianan region and had come to Kaoj City to hide since his sword techniques and martial arts had been nullified. However, Kian Lingxi was rumored to be a beautiful and formidable young lady from Duan Yuhu Mansion. Lai considered meeting her on this New Year's evening in Kaoj was a blessing and believed such a fateful encounter should not be missed. Determined to meet her, Lai's master cautioned her about the master of Duan Yuhu Mansion, advising her not to act recklessly. Lai assured her second uncle that she understood the gravity of the situation and explained that she wanted to make an acquaintance and possibly seek her help. She approached Yang Chen and Lingxi, asking Lingxi if she was from Duan Yuhu Mansion. In response, Lingxi inquired if they knew each other. Lai clarified that they hadn't met before and introduced herself. She conveyed that her Lai family had a favorable relationship with Lingxi's Duan Yuhu Mansion and invited Lingxi for a conversation on this auspicious New Year's evening in a foreign land. Lingxi declined the invitation and requested Yang Chen to leave the place. Yang Chen, enraged by the girl's behavior, insulted her. Lingxi defended herself, stating that Ali Junru was a good person and possessed formidable martial arts skills. Lingxi revealed herself as the young mistress of the Golden Eagle family and cautioned him against provoking her easily. Affectionately, Yang Chen called Lingxi by her loving name, Vixen, while Lingxi referred to him as Xiao Chenzi. They expressed their love for each other and Yang Chen attempted to kiss her once more, but she evaded him and ran away. The following day, a man arrived to take Lingxi with him, and she departed. Yang Chen's master discussed with him, inquiring about his activities from the previous night. Yang Chen asked his master when they could go to Tianan. Curious, his master asked him why he wished to go there. Advising him to return, his master stated that it was too early for Yang Chen to venture to Tianan, considering his cultivation level. Yang Chen eagerly awaited the opportunity to travel to Tianan to find Lingxi. S. 